Good afternoon. I'm Carl Garth and welcome to the Champion Chat with Councillor Alison Champion. Good afternoon, Alison. How are you today? Oh, Carl, great. I'm great. Just keeping warm. Doing my very best. <laughs> a bit of a battle at, uh, with this week's weather. And uh, yeah. also uh, today we're having a look at, as you know, the 2024 Local Council Budget. Joining Alison for this discussion is Councillor Rick Garotti. How are you today, Rick? Yeah, great. Very good to be here. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Alison. Yeah, pleasure. Lovely to have you as always. It's good. Okay. Uh, well, let's let's get into it because council budgets, they're always, always a topic of robust discussions in the community. Mm -hmm. For example, what does the budget cover? What are the residents paying for? You know, what are we getting for our money? So mm -hmm. let's dive right in. And are you able to provide a bit of a breakdown of what areas the Banyal City budget covers? Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously incoming is mostly rates and some grants, uh, and then your outgoings, uh, a key, a key, um, feature is, is your waste management. So your rubbish that people expect. So, and waste management isn't just your, your bin pickup from your nature strip. It's also, um, the public bins, public bin service that we have, um, and, um, the, um, at, at Banksia, at the Banksia Road site, the, um, waste disposal, essentially the large waste disposal, variety of waste um, uh, that, that we contribute to. Um, so waste is a big one. Um, we also cover things like small, smaller but important things like your customer service that you might not always see, uh, IT, um, anything um, related to communications, IT, um, manual banner that comes through, that's part of communications and the news from our neighbourhood. We also cover... Um, places like your parks and gardens, um, local roads, drainage, footpaths. Um, so there you go, roads. There's a thing there that people expect to be a major feature of the budget. Um, that doesn't include footpaths. All right, footpaths is separate. Um, and nature strips, that's another story. Uh, we also, um, we cover things like animal management. So our pets, um, uh, building, planning, um, we also cover services like, say, our aged care services. We cover maternal, child and health, uh, kindergartens. Um, we also cover things like our arts and culture area. So um, any art uh, exhibitions, any local artists, we work with them to provide um, displays, presentations uh, and workshops. Um, what other areas do we cover? I'm just trying to think. Um, Rick, help me out here. There are heaps. I could go on and on and Rick will jump in, obviously, and just think of something else and say something else. Um, we cover, um, I'm just thinking of our departments. We have four major departments, so I'm just thinking of what we cover. Oh, sporting grounds. All our sporting grounds across uh, the, the the area, the um, Banyal, Banyal communities, and there are many, and there are many sports that use those sporting grounds and have to share them. So that's a great big part of the budget that um, we look after. Um, just trying to think what else we do. What else is in the budget there? <laughs> no, I think um, you've given a good, yeah, really good overview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot that a council does, definitely. Mm. Mm. Libraries, there we go. <laughs> so look, obviously a whole lot more than just the whole... Uh, blinkered vision of stick to rubbish and roads. And, and whilst, you know, rubbish and roads might make up quite a lot of the budget, um, do you mm. actually know the figure of how much uh, waste management and roads takes up in the uh, council budget? I think waste is about 15% um, of council budget um, and roads and um, maintenance is probably about 15% as well. Mm. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah, so that's about, a, yeah, at a stretch, maybe a third of the total budget is what people would would call the roads, ro uh, rates, roads and rubbish. Um, mm. Two thirds actually go into a whole range of other services, which mm. which Alison's outlined, yeah. Mm. And, and, and it's really interesting. You've got 30% of the budget, which some people say, just focus on that. 70, 60 to 70% of the budget is on all of those other services that you mentioned. And many of those services are provided for 
at-risk residents living in Banyul. Mm -hmm. um, and especially with this current cost of living crisis and getting access to so many of these services, be it for health, food, whatever the support may be, roughly how many at-risk residents would rely on some sort of council community service in Banyul? Well, I think at the end of the day, um, probably every single resident in the city w would use this, the service of council. Yeah. You know, I mean, Alison touched on it, libraries, mm. um, reserves and parks, yep. um, um, home and aged care services mm -hmm. for our senior sits, mm -hmm. recreation and leisure. Um, a lot of people in the city use Ivanhoe Aquatic, the YMCA, Watermark. Mm. So I would be enormously surprised. Um, in fact, it's probably it's impossible that there'd be a resident in Banyul that's not utilising a service. Mm. Yeah. Um, because yeah. even just accessing the local roads and footpaths. Correct. Um, but in terms of... Um, a focus area on those that are vulnerable within the community. Um, you know, we're very proud to be supporting organisations like D Diamond Valley, um, Community Services, BANSIC. Mm. Um, so they're providing information, referral and support in dealing with government agencies, but they're also running food banks. Mm. And we know at the moment those services have been absolutely overwhelmed because of the cost of living crisis facing the state. Um, and we understand that there's hundreds, if not thousands, in our community that are accessing those services. Um, yes, yeah, so again, very pleased as a council that we'll be able to provide that, Carl. Yeah. And I'm sure that must be a really hard decision-making when you've got so many services you already provide, so many that you would like to provide, and how to prioritise them. Uh, well, that's where that's where we we invest about six months of the year having conversations with each other and officers about what the budget looks like, what did it look like last year, and what have we had residents come to us or what do we see that need to shift or stay where they are. Um, and there's there's sort of the first so at Christmas like I mentioned before in other podcasts at Christmas time we get some Christmas reading and we get a folder with a whole heap of um the, the budget essentially the budget for for mostly the next four years and into the next 10 but mostly we focus on the next four and we read through that and we what we do is by then you know residents have come to us with ideas about projects or what else they'd like for their organization group whatever uh and we just have a little look we obviously pass that on to officers we have a look and we go is that in there is it not in there and um then we come back at the start of the year and usually sometime in february we cover that in a in a we sit together in a briefing and we cover that and we go through that and that is the start of the next budget for to be um um voted on in the following June. So we have a fairly intense sort of four to five months yeah. prior to June of the budget and how we're going to make the budget work and um, how we're going to help assist, provide support for as many people as possible and, and um, you know, help people with their projects as possible. Um, and look, we're, we can still provide, we're very proud of this, we can still provide our rates waiver for those residents who are struggling at the moment financially and domestically um, in their in their home, um, if they're struggling to pay any bills at all, um, we still they can apply for a rate waiver. And the way they do that is there's actually a point system. So they can apply. There's a point system that they follow. So they're asked questions, certain points. And if there's a certain point that they don't reach, then they may apply for the rate waiver. So they don't need to pay their rate for that quarter or that yeah, that period of time. Yep. So we're still really proud of that. We do that. Mm. Okay. Well, speaking about rates, um, uh, there's been a lot of noise around councils raising rates for lots of different initiatives that they do, such as POGO. Whereas in 2023, Banyul was able to limit any sort of rate rise that may have been due to the implementation of FOGO and the way that it was done became a bit of an offset. Um, 
has council been able to maintain rates at 23 levels uh, this year or has the rising inflation affected service delivery costs and therefore we will see mm -hmm. an increase in rates? I'll let you talk about that, Rick, because that was your idea for the last <laughs> the last meeting. <laughs> yeah, so what we um, did as a council, um, Carl, is, is that we said that um, we would operate all rates within the state government cap of 2.75%. Waste costs um, have gone up considerably more than that because yeah. in part because of the landfill levy increases mm -hmm. um, that come from the EPA and state government and just also due to as well the cost of business and the cost of inflation. But as a council, we said um, we're not going to pass that on okay. to, the, to the rate payer, to the resident. We're going to absorb that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're one of the few councils if any that's done, I'd be surprised if any others have done that. Uh, it's come as a cost financially to the council. It wasn't recommended by officers. Mm. Um, it was a hard fight um, at the council meeting um, and there was a vote on this. Um, first time in a long time where council had a, a split vote on this, a 5-4. Right. Um, but um, I moved it and Alison seconded, mm. I think we took the view that in a cost of living crisis that our residents are facing, that we had to find savings to offset these costs and keep things in a manageable level for the resident, which we said was 2.75%. So the long and the short of it is because of the actions we took, Carl, people are better off on average by $30 a household in some areas, that could be over $100, depending on the value of their property. Some may say, well, that's not a lot of money, but that's money in people's pockets. Yep. For some families, that's going out and having a breakfast together that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. We're proud of that. Look, and I think that speaks to good fiscal management. Um, you know, if inflation's running at 4 to 5% and you're only going at half that, um, to be able to do that means that you're managing the money properly or to the best of your ability to be able to not have to, uh, you know, to be able to have that decision, have that um, flexibility to make those decisions. So mm. I think that's a, that's a good feather in Banyol's cap. On um, and and the thing is, though, Rick makes, makes the point, um, you know, there was a bit of a fight. That doesn't mean we were yelling at each other or throwing food or anything across the room. What that means is... Um, we were not 100% as a council group in agreement. Yep. Even the officers were not in agreement with some of us. I actually sat on the fence with this one. Normally we've got, we spent so much time on the budget that by the time we get to, you know, the June meeting, we're done. But with this particular budget, uh, with this particular budget for me, and for some of us, look, I see, I actually go into residents' homes regularly and I can see how they're living in their homes. I'm not there to judge that. I just happen to see that. And there are things that I'm seeing that show me that people are not putting on their, the people are not putting on their gas ducted heating or they're choosing two rooms in their house that they use regularly or can use regularly and they'll heat those and they'll use um, yeah. an electric heater, for example. Yeah. And they So they're doing that to keep their costs down as much as possible. Some people are still working from home and they choose that option. Others are not. They go to work and they use the workplace um, facilities instead. Uh, but I'm, I'm certainly seeing on the ground, regardless of what, inflation numbers are, regardless of what the federal government's saying or the RBA, I'm seeing how people are living and there are cost savings. They're doing things that create a cost saving. So for me, knowing that we've got officers who disagree with what we ended up voting on, um, because we are, we are covering the costs for our residents and knowing that there are... Um, 
you know, there are, you know, we can't keep doing that. Let's be honest, we can't keep doing that. It was a case of this year was, this year, this budget was, right, we really, really have to be considering our residents as well as ourselves, as well as the council. So because I'd seen, and I sat on the fence for this particular item, I really, I was sitting on the fence, I asked for us everyone to speak about it and everyone gave their opinion. And, and at that point, I've just gone, what do I know? What do I see? And I've gone, yes, okay. And we were divided. We were a divided council on this particular item. Yep. Um, and as Rick said, that's not happened before. So for us as a council, um, looking at trying to look after our residents as best we can is what we've tried to do this year to, you could say, the detriment to our bucket of money, if you like. It is for the year. It's for 12 months. It's to help people as much as we can get through them, get through the next financial year. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And I think, Carl, um, what it showed, it, and it comes back to your earlier question around how does council um, make decisions around where to allocate money that was this was in action so yes there was a bit of a difference of opinion amongst the group mm -hmm. but I think we're all aligned as a council around doing best for the community mm -hmm. some of the councillors were concerned well you know if if we didn't um, increase that rate does that impact future services does that impact the future financiability of the council? Whereas others of us were saying, well, look, the needs are there now for the resident and can we find other savings in the budget? Mm. This is very healthy democracy. And it, I think it reflects well on the group that we can have these differences, we can work through it. And then when the budget came up in final version, we all supported it. Yep. So, I'm proud, actually, of how we work through this as a council. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it shows that, um, you know, we are a group of different individuals with different views that bring that to the chamber, mm -hmm. but work through it. And I think ultimately we always, we usually get the right decision overall. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident on this occasion we have as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, what I will also add to that, um, our budget doesn't just come from the rates that a household pays. Our officers work regularly and intensely to try and find ways to save without minimising a service. And what they also do is they look for grants mm. from federal and state levels. And what we have noticed, um, our officers, and they report to us, We've noticed that there has been a significant reduction in the number of grants and the amount for each grant that is being uh, advertised from both state and federal levels. So we, they're, they're there. It's possible to apply for grants still, but they are there are fewer um, compared with, say, two or three years ago and beyond. Uh, and the, the amount of money that is available for a grant is a lot less than it used to be so and it's still got to go around the state or it's still got to go around the country so uh, any organization that uh, achieves uh, a grant is, is successful in a grant application over the last 12 months and I'm going to say going into the next 12 months is very blessed because that will that will help with the the bucket of money that we're able to use to support our our services that we provide okay mm. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> I like I like uh, Rick, your uh, your your reference there about democracy at work. <laughs> it is a good thing, mm. uh, as you said. So, you know, but Alison, I really would have liked to have seen some food fights and all that on the video as you're all having your robust debates. It would make for some good. Uh, I bet you you'd get a lot more people watching council. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, 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 we probably would, but that's not appropriate behavior. Oh, Community <laughs> leaders. So I'll hold that thought though, Carl. Rick and I will hold that thought for you. <laughs> I'm sure we'd get more viewers, Carl, but we might not be around this time next year then to be doing these sorts of videos with you then. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Probably that's not. Right. 
And it's not about the ratings, Carl. There are no ratings <laughs> for a council meeting. <laughs> uh, so just recently, um, a Marybeck councillor introduced a motion. I believe that the motion didn't actually get up, but they were looking at doubling the rates for residential property investors and then using that revenue to offset rates for residences and businesses suffering cost of living pressures, but also as a way that they were hoping that by doubling rates for investors, they may be encouraged to then sell their property to first home buyers and thereby alleviating the current housing crisis. Now, I'm not going to discuss the merits of that proposal, but I guess the question I do have for you both is, should council get involved in what are generally considered to be macroeconomic problems, i.e. national housing crisis, um, you know, interest rates, et cetera? Um, I think councils have to um, be responsive to, to the needs of their community. And I think when it comes to cost of living, I think each level of government has a role to play. Mm. And I think as a council, if we said, well, look, that's federal government responsibility and state mm -hmm. and walked away from that, I think we wouldn't be doing the right thing by the community because I think that they quite rightly expect us to do our share mm -hmm. because working all together three levels with different policies, that's how you get an outcome. We did that by keeping the overall rates at 2.75%. Mm -hmm. We've done that by having the most generous rate hardship um, arrangement in the state, if not the country, 33% off your rates if you're doing it tough financial hardship capped at $550. For many years, we froze our fees and charges. Mm. We've also got very strong business support arrangements in place, in particular with our 11 traders associations. Mm -hmm. So that's the approach that we've taken mm -hmm. at Banyul, which is just to really um, keep our costs low as a council, run an efficient council, deliver good services, and then pass on that benefit as much as possible to all residents, but particularly those in need, those doing it hard in, in hardship. Mm -hmm. I think the issue that we would have with the Mary Beck solution is in some ways it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also be concerned that it would result in a, a driving up rents mm -hmm. for those that are renting from those landlords. Um, one of the things that we're going to now look at as a council is, is that we have the hardship in place for ratepayers, but we're conscious that residents who are renting, we don't have those hard hardship arrangements in place. And we, we want to look at extending that potentially next financial year to that cohort. So I suppose that's how we're tackling it in Banyul. Mm -hmm. um, Alison, I don't know your thoughts. Yeah, look... Agree, obviously. Uh, I'm going to go down the path of sort of a more entrepreneurial mindset. Over the last few weeks, um, I've, been I've been having some interesting conversations with a variety of people who have their thoughts on what council should do regarding rates and uh, the state of the economy and um, the budget in general. And... There are people who've come to me and, and just said, Alison, you need to raise your rates and cut your services. Okay, raise your rates, cut your services. Now, as a Banyul resident, if you open your rates and you look at them and go, oh, they're a lot higher than last year, and then you go to use, maybe you're an older person and you used one, want to use one of our aged care services, you can't access that now because that's been reduced. Maybe you're um, a young person and you really look forward to Youth Fest in September. That's not happening because that's cutting a service. Oh. Okay. So imagine that. That's a general broad overview. Mm. I guarantee, and I'm sure Rick does too, no one on council, none of the officers want that for our community. 
because that's the real simplification of what that will be living in Banyul. You've got really high rates to cover any losses and then you've got n re reduced or no services that you on a daily basis may use. Yep. And your life, therefore, is not benefiting. You are not benefiting as a human being. So um, so then coming back to the Mary Beck suggestion or you know, possible solution, where then, as we say, pay, you know, take from Peter to pay Paul. So an investor, why does one invest? Why, why do you invest? Why, why have we got uh, why have we got a sort of an economy set up in such a way that we can use our equity in our home to go and buy an investment property? So we're not only giving someone a home to live in, I'm say giving, you know, obviously there's rent, <laughs> but we're providing a roof for somebody else. Mm -hmm. who can't afford it for whatever reason, that's fine. And uh, you know, a lot of, you know, uni students, young people can't afford it. So, uh, and now it's a lot more families who can't afford their, you know, the mortgage they're renting. Uh, and so we're providing a roof over the head as an investor. If you're going to make investors pay, which by the way, right now, the state government is doing with a massive increase to land tax. And so many people have said to me over the last 12 to 18 months, oh, like, Alison, have you seen my land tax bill? It has gone up to this. So I've got, no, I haven't seen your land tax bill, but sure, I can hear you. I hear you. Yep. So there's a lot of that happening right now. So the state government's already put up the land tax significantly. Um, um, and so if we're, so if our investors, uh, and there are other taxes coming on, by the way, uh, they're actually in the pipeline to be introduced in the next 12, to, uh, 12 months to two years for investors. So investors are actually being hit. Yeah. So the big picture is we're not being encouraged to own any property in this state except our own home. Yeah. We're not being encouraged to invest. The whole reason that people buy investment properties is so that they can be financially independent later in life. Mm. So they're not relying on the taxpayer to pay for their pension. Mm. All right. So they're trying to be financially independent. So if you start hitting their hip pocket, uh, you know, apart from paying, you know, taking from Peter to pay Paul, on a short term, on the long term, uh, you're actually um, providing a detrimental outcome to a variety of economies uh, and you're encouraging people to not be financially independent and reliant on a pension, which then increases the tax system. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Mm. Okay. Look, I'd like to just um, move on and, and uh, something I'd like to talk about Last year's budget was referred to as a recovery effort from COVID-19, and it noted that services revenue would take time to return back to what was projected pre-COVID. Um, obviously, we've now had cost of living, inflationary, et cetera. So has services revenue started to recover back to um, pre-COVID budget projections, or are we still, to be honest, still in that recovery phase? I think we've fully recovered now in that way, Carl. Okay, that's all. So yeah, yeah, it's good. So I think we're we're fully recovering those uh, sources. Um, and yeah, I think last year you're right was probably a transition out of COVID um, budget. This is probably again feels um, in another way another transition, hopefully to business as usual um, in the future, but. Um, you know, reality is, is, is that we just have to live within our means. Mm. Um, we have to be very careful about not committing to new expenditures or new initiatives that, um, that raise a community demand then that we may then not be able to meet in the future. Mm. The good thing about Banyul has been that everything that we say we do, we follow through and do, yep. and then we maintain we haven't been a council that has uh, taken on a new service or a new initiative and then a few years down the tr track cut it out because of the funding situation. 
So I think that what that gives the residents and our staff a lot of certainty mm. to know that when Banyul commits to something, we're committing something to the long term. One thing that I am really proud of is the work that we've done as a council in cutting our debt. Mm. And 10 years ago when I was first elected, our debt was pushing 40% of council revenue. Our interest bill was $3.5 million a year. This coming year um, in the budget, our debt is less than 10% of council revenue. We're only spending $1.5 million a year now on interest. That's another $2 million a year that we're putting back into the community and not spending on debt repayments. Okay. So that's the benefit, I think, of what you get of just being mature about things, thoughtful, considerate. We've we've done so much. The rates hardship, our inclusive jobs program. Mm -hmm. We we did the urban forest strategy. That's in the budget. Mm -hmm. Climate action plan will be carbon neutral mm -hmm. by 2028. We're doing a lot of good things, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things that are valued by the community, but we're living within our means. Yeah. Um, and I'm just very glad to be part of a group of councillors that, that think in that way. Um, and and that's, that's really the challenge now that we've set ourselves going forward is, is to maintain that um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's hard. Like Alison was saying, it involves going through the budget line by line every year with that discipline. Um, mm. But I'm committed to doing that. I know Alison is, and, and I know really most of our colleagues are, Carl. Mm. Mm. Um, and look, I'll, I'm, I'll add something there. Um, so, you know, you, you asked the question, obviously, yeah, we're, 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 we're close to fully, we're close to fully, fully recovered. Um, as, you know, as we were saying earlier, we had a challenging meeting and we we didn't necessarily agree with with some of us didn't agree with each other some of us didn't agree with officers recommendation uh however we are on the path that we're on now and uh we know that our residents will will appreciate it uh i'm i will also add um for those who believe that councils just need to focus on roads what is it rates roads and rubbish if they did do that there would be no applications for grants, which are provided, okay, by state and federal levels. Uh, there are about, look, there are essentially in Banyol, there are four major departments um, that these services cover. Now you wish are actually falling under two, uh, sorry, they fall under, they are two items that fall under one department and that's assets. So our assets department takes care of our roads and our rubbish. That's three other departments in Banyol that sort of become obsolete. That's a lot of people who aren't employed. Mm. That's a lot of people who are not connecting and providing expertise for our community to provide services that actually are important for them. And then, therefore, if councils or local government isn't providing those services and employing those people to provide those services what does the state look like who's going to take which department so is it federal or state that's going to take on board uh, a lot of services like your you know your aged care your groups like your neighborhood houses and your um, scout groups um, your sporting clubs arts culture etc your libraries there are a lot a lot of services that would actually be under either state or federal level in this current um, political um, structure that we have in yeah. Australia. Mm. Yeah, but and obviously that's not going to happen, Carl. I mean, that's that's what our commitment as a council is to maintain all of those services and infrastructure. Mm. But I think it is important to say that, look, when we hear from the community around where they see ideas or opportunities to do things better, we do hear that and engage in that. We, we're a very modest council in that regard and we're open to the ideas and mm. open to the discussion. Mm. Um, we, we just encourage it to be 
And I think this is where Alison's maybe getting at just a mature conversation. Mm. Say, well, look, there's a to go to just suggest that it's roads and it rates and rubbish, that's a little bit um yeah, that that thinking's not realistic. Libraries, community services, aged and home care, mm. um, you know, vaccinations mm. for young children. The list goes on. Um, and I don't need to go on. I need, don't need to trot it out again. But I think we just need to be realistic then about saying, okay, well, if you do want to, you know, for residents or ratepayers out there that do want to see a sizable cut, let's say, in rates, mm. let's have an honest conversation then about those services. Let's not just, just talk pie in the sky and big picture, you know, let's, let's engage in the detail. Um, and then if you if you do, you know, if, if, if you do think that things should be removed or, or cut back, well, then have a conversation about it. So mm-hmm. we're open to that. Yeah. Um, but we want to just have a mature, realistic conversation. Sometimes from some quarters, we're not always getting that. And, and I think Alison has really highlighted that mm. a bit of what she's had to say today and also um, at the last council meeting. Mm. And you know what? Community has an opportunity to speak, um, I think it's about December, when there's there's actually a consultation. There's time for consultation um, for people to um, present, you know, what they would like to see. Um, and then that's then at the start of the following year in about February, Mar- February, March, there is an opportunity to speak again to council um, about what you'd like to see in the budget. So there are a couple of occasions during the year where, where the community has an opportunity to say what they'd like to see and what they think. Okay. Now, Carl and Alison, I've got to go, because as councillors, we do have day jobs. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, was there anything else that you thought you wanted to cover off, Carl or or Alison? Um, Just very quickly, and and I mean very quickly, the one highlight for you in this budget and what would be the one thing that you would have loved to have been able to add to the budget? Yeah, great. So the the big highlight for me is, um, oh, there's so many. You've made that one hard. (laughs) <laughs> the big highlight for me in this budget and every budget, Carl, is the Inclusive Jobs Program. Yeah. I'm just so proud of the fact that we create 15 to 20 jobs every year for people with disabilities and from disadvantaged backgrounds and barriers to employment. So every year that will be the most proudest thing that I'm happy about in our budget, without a doubt. The one thing that I would have liked to have seen gone into the budget and uh, Alison will smile about this, <laughs> um, was the Banyal Blitz. Yeah. Um, I wanted to increase our service levels of street sweeping, yeah. um, of um, repairing roads and, and footpaths, um, uh, maintaining our reserves. Um, I wanted to put in an extra budget of about a million dollars a year to do that. Um didn't get quite over the line on that one. So, um, but I'll have a crack next year if I'm back and if Alison's back. Yeah. Uh, hope that answers your question, Carl. It does. Thanks, Rick. And you'll get my support on the uh, the Blitz, uh, all those gum trees. Mm-hmm. Happy, to, happy to see a bit more sweet. Yeah. Well, well, advocate to your other councillor and <laughs> councillor champion here because I'm doing my best. <laughs> Shall do. Thank you for your time today, Rick. Yeah, thanks so much, Rick. Always a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, here's one. Yeah, great. That's a great, great question, Carl, and great, great response there from, from Rick. Yeah. So, Alison, uh, I'll put the mm. same question to you. Yeah. For you, what was the highlight? What was the one highlight for you in this budget? And what was the one thing you wish that you had, could have been able to include? Okay, I'm Councillor Liz, Elizabeth Neely, and I are on the warpath for uh, the handful of unsealed roads Uh, in our wards in the northern and eastern parts of Banyal. Actually, looking at Sherbourne Ward, it's actually northeast, north and east Banyal. Yeah, and Councillor Liz in Beale Ward is north Banyal. Uh, So we still have some unsealed roads in our wards and for certainly, certainly the 
the last four years. This term on council, we have had regular conversations, meetings with residents uh, about their roads, um, um, surveys, offices, costs, everything associated with that. Uh, I'm still on that. I still, and Council Liz is as well. Um, we know we're, we're same as uh, Rick with his... Um, Blitz. His, um, Blitz, his Banyol Blitz. We know we're on a mountain. <laughs> we know we're at the bottom of the mountain and we know we need to keep pushing. Uh, and it's a case of um, being very strategic and being very strategic about how the result that we would like to see happens and and really being in conversation with not just our councillors but also our residents and the officers and being very collaborative and coordinated about the best outcome or an outcome that's as close as, if not, what the residents would like. So I would, I know that she and I would love to see that. Um, at this stage where like Rick is, we're disappointed so far with the response and the outcome for our fellow fellow councillors. And look, it partly comes back to, you know, does my ward benefit from that? So if the money's going to that, does my do my residents benefit? And if the answer's no, or no, not really, I'd rather see the money go towards this, which is better for the whole of Banyol, or I'd like some of that to actually come to my ward. If we don't see our ward being looked after, really, that's the bottom line. And really, is that project going to benefit as many people as possible? Yep. That's when that's when there's a sticking point. So Rick's got his sticking point with his um, blitz, and Liz and I have our sticking point with our unsealed roads. And we are all going to stay on those journeys and have those conversations we need to have. With regards to a highlight, um, <clears throat> probably the highlight for me is just the general, we, we have a rate cap that's being advised by state. We are sticking to the rate cap. We could have increased rates by 27.5% for the next financial year, which was what was advised by officers. 27.5%. Wow. That's how much in the last, you know, couple of years we've been looking after our residents through the rates waiver and other things. That's how much we're taking from, say, um, let's say, you know, the landfill fees that state government are imposing, that's what we're taking on board. You know, the buck stops with us. So this is where, you know, when you just do the numbers and you go, we're actually taking on board a lot for our residents. So we get a rate cap increase. We get an increase and we can, we've got a rate cap. So we're going at the 2.75%. Whereas if we'd gone for the, imagine that, you go and you can do your maths on your rates now. 27.5% is a big chunk to cover those increased costs from other areas that we're looking, we're, we're, we're holding on to those. We're I've, covering those. I think from MMI rates was 2,400. I don't know. Sure, let's go with 2,400. Right. Times 1.275. 27.5, yeah. Extra $660. For the year? Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yes, especially when you're struggling, as uh, Rick said, to put food on the table. Yeah, and there are people not who would, like I said, they're not choosing to not put the gas ducted heating on. Yep. Yeah, right. and so that's it. Yep, yeah. it's and people are genuinely still choosing between heating and cooling, food, rent or mortgage, health. Mortgage. Look at the mortgage increases. Yep. You know from. May, was it May, April 2022 for the next over 12 months? It was about 13 months. Hmm. Every every month, you know, people were real, people were screaming. They still are. It's not any better. <laughs> so we're holding on, we're taking on board. The buck stops with us for now for this budget. We're taking that on board and I'm happy with that. 
And I'm really happy with the conversations that we had with uh, each other as a councillor group. You know, we agreed to disagree. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We move on. No hard feelings. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, no. And get behind it. Yeah, and you get behind it. And um, you know what? We're, you know, it's clear publicly we disagreed. And I'm happy to have the conversation with people. Look, we disagreed because. Um, and yet there are, you know, sometimes, um, you know, there are there are councillors who really want us to be seen as a, um, you know, a united front. Uh, the way we do that is that we just agree to disagree or we agree and we move on. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Yep. I know that time's a bit of the essence, but one last question for you, Alison. Wait a minute. I'd say it is an easy one. Maybe not. Can you sum up this budget for me in one sentence? There's something for everyone. Oh, my goodness. That almost sounded like a federal treasurer. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, did they say that too? <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> but I really thought about that question. And the reality is there's something for everyone, even if you don't know it. No. Mm. Okay. Well, look, Alison, I'd like to thank you. And, of course, uh, Rick, when he was here for both your time today, mm -hmm. I think there's been some really good insights there into the Banyol City budget. Thank you very much, Carl. It's always a pleasure. Uh, and if you really want to see uh, the council meeting from, uh, what was it, the end of June? It was the 24th of June was the council meeting, uh, which declared the budget. Please feel free to go to the council website or Facebook page. It's online. You can watch. There were other things there too. Cats and dogs in public places. That was bigger than the budget. <laughs> For those who are interested, there will be a link in the uh, in the text that will bring you to this year's budget if you wish to have a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like to thank everybody who listened to this podcast. Mm -hmm. Hope you will join us all for next month's Champion Chat podcast and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.